sad days happen and I'm dramatic so when they happen to me it feels like an overwhelming pit of despair paralyzing me spreading from my heart throughout me trying to swallow me from the inside out it sucks to feel sadness so deeply sometimes it's so heavy that it ruins nearly everything I enjoy on a regular basis I can't game I can't eat I can't watch anything happy or even work on my content especially if it's positive the only thing I can use to confront my sadness is writing and watching depressing anime. You know how there are people who like to listen to depressing music when they're sad? I totally get it. Even though it makes you feel worse in a sense, it helps you get through it really. And that's how I am with anime. I have a collection of super sad anime episodes from a ton of different anime titles that I'll often revisit when I'm feeling down in the dumps. <laughs> For example, Stray Cat Milky Way, episode 4 of Michiko and Hachin. Michiko and Hachin is a wild, violent, yet emotional anime about the infamous criminal Michiko, runaway girl Hachin, and their journey together trying to track down Hiroshi, Michiko's ex-lover and Hachin's alleged father. This thrilling anime with a kaleidoscope of characters and a really cool immersive setting of a fictional country that has cultural traces to South American countries like Brazil. And the best part of this anime are the characters, the many characters, although the relationship between Michiko and Hachin is the focus. <laughs> However, in episode 4, we are introduced to Pepe Lima. She's a dancer at a nightclub Michiko is drinking at in the opening scene. Drunk and fawning over a picture of Hiroshi, Michiko heckles her. What's with your pants? They ain't got no jiggle! And Pepe notices Michiko from the stage. She later finds Michiko drunk exiting a bathroom and messes with her more than likely for the way she embarrassed her on stage. Pepe is petty, and Michiko is drunk. So the next day, hungover Michiko is summoned by this gangster Rico, who uses children to do his dirty work. Come with us, lady. Oh, the name's Rico. Top dog. I googled the word favela and it's defined as a slum or shanty town located within or on the outskirts of the country's large cities. So basically, Rico is exploiting poor kids to do his violent gangster work. Despicable. This explains why these kids have weapons and drive cars. The city is kinda scary. So Rico claims he runs the neighborhood and he's demanding money from Michiko for the events of the previous episode. While this is happening, there is a basically naked woman behind a mesh curtain watching TV. Right when Rico asks Michiko for a physical payment, she flings the TV in Michiko's direction. It does seem like she's reacting to the show she was watching, but I feel like that was totally intentional. And then after, she just walks around and dances drunkenly. We can easily recognize that this woman is Pepe Lima, the dancer chick from the club last night. She seems to be living with Rico, the gangster guy, which is weird and... She seems unhinged and still petty. Moments later, while Michiko and Hachin are walking back to the restaurant, here comes Miss Pepe being driven in a pink car. She tries to get the driver to run over Michiko, which he would have done if it weren't for Hachin. Her behavior reminds Hachin of Michiko immediately, and I kinda see what she means. Both women are explosive and reckless. In the next scene, Pepe seems to be finishing a night of dancing at the club. She looks exhausted. Judging by the state we saw her in earlier, I'm guessing this kind of work is hard on her. And I can imagine so. She sighs when she sees her little sister waiting for her in her dressing room, Lulu. We finally see a softer side of Pepe while she's at lunch with her little sister. The two are dining at the restaurant Hachin works in. Yeah, child labor laws are just not a thing in this anime. I'm wondering where Lulu stays when Pepe is working or at Rico's. Pepe brings up Hiroshi Moreno's to Hachin. Hiroshi Moreno's. What's he to you? He's my father, probably. Hiroshi is the objective of this entire series. He is supposedly Hachin's father and absolutely Michiko's ex-lover, whom she's still crazy obsessively hung up over. 
for some reason. I don't know, guy seems like a coward to me. But Michiko and Hachin are searching for him together. Pepe claims that she knows Hiroshi personally. You know, he's a decent guy, Hiroshi Morenos. Yeah, we go way back. <laughs> she then invites Hachiko and Michin to her birthday celebration at the club. She then proceeds to dine in Dash, and right before she dips, she reminds Hachin to bring the crazy woman. Michiko is pissed to think that Hiroshi messed around with Pepe. You telling me Hiroshi messed around with that piece of trash? No! No f way! But she and Hachin absolutely go to the birthday party because Michiko is super desperate to find Hiroshi and won't turn down any leads. And happy Aries season! Pepe is an Aries along with Hachin and me, confirmed. Pepe actually has the same birthday as my mom. And Mina from Twice! In her dressing room, we see Pepe in a super cute birthday outfit, and Lulu has a matching one too! So cute! Pepe seems really serious in this moment. We don't know the context, but she tells her little sister, you know you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Lulu reassures her sister that she'll do it. We, the audience, aren't even sure what it is. Slimeball Rico enters the dressing room to check on Pepe to see if she's ready to perform. Pepe signals to Lulu to leave the room. Even Rico notices. Rico doesn't even know who Lulu is to Pepe. Interesting that her boss slash boyfriend doesn't know who her little sister is. This lets me know that Pepe is protective. When along with Rico, Pepe tries to get some money out of him. She knows he's making a ton of money tonight especially. It's her birthday, but Rico has no intention of giving her anything. Horrible. Men shouldn't hit women. Girls are soft. Don't hit women. And then Pepe does her thing on stage. It's her birthday, so she's really racking it up tonight, and her patrons are doing the absolute most. What's that skank doing? <laughs> Heck if I know. After the show, she greets her invited guests, Michiko and Hachin at the bar. I would pause at 8-year-old Hachin drinking juice at the bar, but I saw a kid drive a car earlier, so I'm not surprised. Hachin is slammed. In her drinking rant, she takes the conversation away from Hiroshi and asks why Pepe is so obsessed with money. Pepe says she doesn't like money, but it is important. If she has money, no one can laugh at her. She does seem sensitive to people looking down on her. I got that vibe earlier when Michiko drunkenly mocked her, and she never let that go. So we get into Pepe's background story, and it's actually really sad. She once had a family where she was spoiled and happy. Then her father died and her family became mired in debt. She and her little sister were thrown out, living homeless. She recounts that not a single person helped her and her sister, which is why she doesn't trust anyone. She has a very pessimistic outlook on her relationships with people. But yeah, given the setting of these friends she referenced, I wouldn't expect anything genuine either. Michiko points out that despite Hachin saying that the girl reminded them of each other, Michiko doesn't believe they're alike at all because Michiko does believe in her friends. Michiko also hints that she doesn't believe anything Pepe says. She asks Pepe what her goal is for collecting so much money. Pepe says she's going to Sao Pariso. It seems her primary goal is to stand over those who once stood over her and laugh. She mentions her plan to make fake IDs, but that she doesn't have enough to pay for two IDs, one for her and her sister. Michiko comments on how Lulu isn't like Pepe. It was a weird comment to me, I guess because Pepe does look very different from her sister, but I mean, she's a little girl? Pepe wants her sister to become a better woman than she is, and she says she's thankful Lulu isn't anything like her. She says she's going to protect her. Then suddenly, she challenges Michiko to a drinking contest, betting that if Michiko wins, she'll tell her everything she knows about Hiroshi. But if Pepe wins, Michiko has to give her money. Michiko agrees. As the women start their competition, we get a glance of Lulu leaving. Michiko beats Pepe, easily. But Pepe is a fraud and doesn't know anything about Hiroshi. Annoyed, Michiko dips. Back at their hotel room, as Michiko is putting Hachin to bed, she discovers they have an intruder. A hand reaches out from under the bed and snatches a bag of their belongings. Michiko is on it, going right for the burglar. And it's Lulu, Pepe's little sister, stealing from Michiko and Hachin's room. Michiko lunges at Lulu, but Lulu apparently is a ninja from Konoha and somersaults right over Michiko. 
she dashes out of the room. She has their stuff and she is out. The next scene seems to be at Pepe's house. I thought she lived with Rico, but I'm glad she has her own place. Lulu arrives with the bag. Pepe is relieved her sister made it back, but Lulu is upset. They don't have IDs, she says and apologizes. So now we see there is some truth to the story Pepe told Michiko. She is planning to escape to another country with her sister, but they don't have what they need to make it. Pepe reassures her little sister that they can get the extra birthday money from Rico. The sisters are worried about how they'll both each get an ID. Pepe plans to prioritize getting Lulu's ID, but in order to get the money needed for her ID, she will have to do something that'll force her to run away afterwards. The girls devise a plan. So we cut to the next scene where we see slimy club owner Rico sleeping in his bed. Pepe and Lulu conceal their identities and break into his house. While Pepe holds the knife to Rico, Lulu with the shotgun as big as her, blasts open his safe. Then Pepe knocks him out. What we can assume to be hours later, we see Rico examining his empty safe. Lulu and Pepe cleaned him out, and rightfully so, honestly. So Rico summons his kid soldiers and tells them to close off every road. He apparently knows who robbed him, and he instructs the kids to go after them, and not to let them out of the neighborhood. He offers 500 arcas to whoever finds them and tells them to shoot them on sight. We see the boys driving cars all over the neighborhood, as hooded Lulu and Pepe sneak around the city. As the girls are running, Pepe recalls that she forgot the photo she was going to use for Lulu's fake ID. She left it at the house, a huge mistake. Lulu offers to go back to the house and get it. Lulu assures her sister that no one knows who she is and that she's such a quick runner, she could easily get the photo and meet back at the bus stop. Without waiting for an answer, Lulu tells her sister to meet her at the bus stop and takes off. We then cut to Michiko's POV. She's riding her motorbike around the city, also looking for Lulu. Michiko also has a bone to pick with her because don't forget Lulu robbed them the other night. She sees her riding through the alley. Michiko follows Lulu, where we see Lulu is being chased by two boys, most likely Rico's gangster babies. So she begins to follow them. We see Lulu running with a smile on her face right before the scene transitions with the sound of Michiko's bike speeding by. The scene changes again, and we see that it's later in the day. Pepe is sitting on Michiko's bed in her hotel room, facing away from her. She confesses to Michiko that they took Rico's money, Lulu went back to get something, and then she never came back. She starts projecting, blaming Michiko, saying that if she and Hachin only had IDs, none of this would have had to happen. Pepe, out of pure desperation, tells Michiko that she is coming with her to confront Rico. Michiko refuses, saying that this mess has nothing to do with her. Pepe begins to plead saying that she only wants Michiko to come with her because she thinks something happened to Lulu. She begs Michiko for her help. Michiko continues to refuse, repeatedly saying that she does not need the trouble. Despite her complete lack of faith in people, she really believed that Michiko would help her. She then tries to blackmail Michiko, who we watch escape from prison and kidnap slash rescue Hachin in the first episode, and threatens to call the cops. Pepe tries blackmailing and pleading with Michiko just to get her to come to Rico's place. Her plan is to return the money and get Lulu back. She fears that Rico won't forgive her, so she wants to use Michiko as a buffer, is what it seems like. This whole time, Michiko has been very still. Normally so expressive and explosive, Michiko hasn't said much other than no to Pepe. Michiko does finally coldly reply, if you're gonna call the cops, go ahead. It's really sad to see Pepe beg Michiko, but I totally understand why Michiko does not want to get involved herself. If something were to happen to her, who would watch over Hachin? This is where Pepe gives up on Michiko. I think it's because she gets it. Both she and Michiko want to protect these little girls who mean so much to them. Michiko sees how Pepe messed up and can't risk being in her situation. Pepe, defeated, grabs her bag and begins to leave. Michiko does try to give Pepe money before she leaves. A true act of kindness for Michiko. Pepe scoffs at it, takes it and leaves. After Pepe leaves the room, we see Michiko suddenly erupt with emotion. She throws the lighter at the mirror hanging above the bed. It shatters and it is revealed that Michiko is feeling regret. So in the Japanese version, after Michiko throws the lighter, she says, why don't I help her? In the English dub, she says, why didn't I just help her? I feel like the Japanese version is in relation to Pepe and the English dub is referring to Lulu. Because Michiko saw Lulu being chased by the boys. 
Whatever happened to Lulu after that moment was off screen, but Michiko was a witness. Maybe Michiko saw what happened to Lulu and instead of helping the little girl who just stole from her, she drove on by. Now she feels guilty after seeing the state of her big sister Pepe and realizing that she could be in the same situation with Hachin. In the final scene of the episode, we see Pepe in a car riding. The sun is setting in the background and we can only assume she's headed to Rico's. The driver abruptly stops because ahead of him are three toddlers with guns. Rico instructed the kids earlier to block off all the neighborhood entrances and exits, and they drove right into one. Pepe exits the car and is approached by the boys. The boys squeeze the triggers, and the last thing we hear are the gunshots as the screen cuts to black. For characters that only last one episode, Pepe and Lulu made an impact with their incredibly tragic story. I imagine Pepe knew her faith when returning to Rico and the chances that Lulu would not be alive. Still, I think she continued on because if there was any chance of reuniting with her little sister, she would absolutely take it no matter the cost. I really don't think she would want to carry on without her sister who she obviously loves so much. Since their father died, Pepe and Lulu have been alone together. Pepe, as the big sister, chose to sacrifice herself to work in an environment she didn't trust. It didn't seem to me that Pepe liked being a dancer. She was hyper aware of people like Michiko who looked down on her for doing it, and knew her patrons weren't her actual friends, no one she could turn to when she was down. I think she saw an opportunity to take care of herself and her little sister with dancing, but unfortunately, she was taken advantage of. Pepe's relationship with Rico was abusive. He used her dancing profit for his club, and from what we can tell, he didn't pay Pepe half as much. She was always broke and asking for money. Rico probably didn't want her to get too independent and purposely kept money away from her. Pepe obviously got caught up in his lifestyle, probably mistaking it for protection. But I'm sure she endured everything so that she and Lulu could survive. Pepe had bigger dreams for the two of them to escape to another country with better opportunities and quality of life for both girls. Yeah, Pepe plotted on Michiko and Hachin. She wasn't a morally righteous character, but she scammed in the name of love. When you look back at each of the scenes Pepe and Lulu were in together, they're wearing matching outfits, which is not only cute, but a testament of Pepe's adoration for her sister. In the end, as a fellow Aries, I recognize some of our cardinal qualities and I feel like Pepe used them in the wrong way which led to her making a critical mistake. She was too impulsive. Anyone who knows an Aries knows that we can be very impulsive. She should have took her time plotting her escape from Rico so that way it can really go off without a hitch. It's not like he was on to her. She should have started by stealing small increments of money and then selling like any gift he gave her. Assuming that he did that. He didn't even know it was her birthday while at her birthday celebration, so maybe it's worse than I thought. And that's why she was so anxious to flee. Her temper and desire for revenge was also the force behind a lot of her actions in my opinion. She was so angry and resentful of being abandoned by everyone when her father died. She hates that people look down on her for being a dancer. They don't know why she dances, they just make assumptions based off her image. This episode made an impression on me because it is so incredibly tragic. Pepe and Lulu were victims of their own unfortunate circumstances, and it's sad to see two sisters succumb to the life that they were so desperately trying to escape. It totally mirrors our protagonists, in a sense, which is totally heartbreaking. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you weren't traumatized. If you're an anime masochist like me and you would like to revisit more utterly tragic anime episodes, let me know in the comments. Bye guys. Bye.